on World News Tonight. Brace for impact. Typhoon Dog Suri transforms from storm to super typhoon as it continues to menace Philippines, Taiwan and China. Crane collapse. Construction crane catches fire and collapses in the heart of Manhattan, sending commuters fleeing for their lives. Grain blockade. European Union seeks alternative routes to export Ukrainian grains to avert an imminent food crisis. And dazzling Dior. High fashion reads life into classical Rome in Dior designer Maria Grazia in her fall show. This is Adaderna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and you are watching World News Tonight and we begin in Philippines. At least one person has been killed in the Philippines after Typhoon Dogs who lashed northern parts of the archipelago, ripping off roofs, knocking out power, flooding low-lying villages and displacing thousands of people. The powerful storm, which brought winds of up to 175 kilometers per hour as it slammed into the Philippines, is expected to sustain strength as it continues its course towards Taiwan and China later this week. Typhoon Doksuri lashed East Asia on Wednesday, causing devastation in the northern Philippines and threatening China and Taiwan with gale force winds. The typhoon brought more than three feet of rain with it in places, bursting banks of rivers and leaving thousands without electricity. Rain pounded coastal communities, forcing many to be evacuated as winds reached 108 miles per hour. China's Meteorological Administration labeled the event a super typhoon as Guangdong province warned of the worst storm in a decade. Doksuri is nearly 560 miles across and is expected to sustain strength as it continues towards Taiwan and the Chinese mainland it is expected to arrive on Friday. In Taiwan, supermarket shelves were cleared as residents anticipated spending longer indoors sheltering from the storm. I came to buy vegetables and meat to prepare for the typhoon, but there's nothing left. Throughout July, record temperatures have caused havoc across the globe, sparking wildfires in the US and the Mediterranean. Scientists say global warming will also make storms wetter, windier and more violent. Now we turn to the terrifying scene at New York City, that massive crane fire and collapse slicing into the neighboring building as it came crashing down during rush hour. The giant construction crane was on fire 45 stories up and its arms snapping off and crashing down to the street, leaving several people hurt. It was a terrifying morning in midtown Manhattan, a giant crane oh. on fire, collapsing, slamming into a nearby skyscraper plunging at least 45 stories to the street below, sending people running for their lives. The oh fell. This video showing panicked construction workers inside the building. Should we get out? I don't know, is it gonna keep falling off? Yeah. Let's go! As I'm in the building, I could have swore it was my last day. That crane was lifting 16 tons of concrete. You can hear the roar of debris raining down. Just the building shaking alone was enough for everybody just to run away. Firefighters rushing to the scene, spraying water on the flames from an adjacent rooftop. Injured member struck by debris from the crane. Miraculously, no one was killed, but 11 suffering non-life threatening injuries. Officials say the fire started in the engine compartment of that crane around 7.30 a.m. The operator trying to put it out with a fire extinguisher before escaping. Amanda Drews and Alex Zay were in their apartment when that crane smashed into their window. I heard the, like, the, the big explosion and then something falling and then all three went my window panes like flew in my face. The company that owned the crane from today's incident was also involved in two deadly crane collapses back in 2008. The company has not responded to a request for comment. Following Russia's withdrawal from the Black Sea grain deal, the European Union seeks to export Ukrainian farm produce via countries bordering that country, which the Union calls Solidarity Lanes. The IMF says that the repercussions to global food prices could be significant as well. The European Union is seeking to export Ukrainian grains via what are called Solidarity Lanes. This is according to the EU Agriculture Commissioner on Tuesday, following Russia's recent withdrawal from the Black Sea grain deal. 
the trade using the solidarity lanes by, by Poland, by, by Hungary, for example, by Romania. Romania is the, the, the biggest uh, transport uh, the, the corridor. Solidarity lanes are rail and road transport connections through EU member states. To realize the plan, cooperation is needed from five countries bordering Ukraine, including Poland, Hungary and Romania. Russia recently pulled back from a UN-backed initiative that allowed Ukraine to safely ship its farm produce through ports on the Black Sea. This could severely harm global food security as Ukraine, known as the breadbasket of Europe, is amongst the top three exporters of grain in the world. In fact, the International Monetary Fund on Tuesday warned that Russia's recent pull from the deal may result in higher global grain prices. We would be thinking that somewhere in the range of 10-15% increase in prices of grains is a reasonable estimate. Meanwhile, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba in an interview on Tuesday said Ukraine would keep trying to revive the deal. However, he also added if it is not possible, it will seek an alternative sea route to ensure grain exports to Europe. When it comes to new export alternatives, he said Q could use American F-16 fighter jets to protect grain shipping lanes in the Black Sea. Kuleva said Q with F-16s could launch a new, safe and efficient corridor to export some 100 million tons of Ukrainian grain to the global market. Ukraine is due to receive the jets before the end of this year. Asia's longest-serving leader, Cambodian Prime Minister Han Sen, said that he will step down as Prime Minister and hand over the position to his older son, who won his first seat in Parliament in the general election. The announcement came after their Cambodian People Party won a landslide victory in elections that Western countries and rights organizations criticized as neither free nor fair, and in which the country's main opposition candlelight party was suppressed. After nearly four decades in charge, Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen has announced he's stepping down and he's confirmed his 45-year-old son Hun Manet is going to be taking over the country's top job. I now say to you that Hun Manet will become the Prime Minister from the evening of August 22, 2023. Then you can call him the Prime Minister or you can be outlawed if you don't call him the Prime Minister. The announcement comes just days after Hun Sen's Cambodian People's Party won 120 of the 125 parliamentary seats available in a general election. Critics denounced that election on Sunday as a sham, however. That was after the government disqualified the sole opposition party on a technicality and threatened to penalise anyone calling for a boycott. Western-educated Hun Manet, who is deputy commander-in-chief of the armed forces, has said little of his vision for the country. He won a seat in the capital, Phnom Penh, in Sunday's election, but had been earmarked for the top job by his father in 2021. On Wednesday, Hun Sen described his relinquishing of power as a, quote, sacrifice. To all my brothers and sisters who are ministers, please stay calm. We have one sacrifice, and the biggest sacrifice is me. Even though my son takes my job, but the person who used to be in command had power, and now I have no power, so this is the sacrifice. Opposition politicians, most of whom are in self-exile, and rights groups as well, say that Hun Sen has for years suppressed democratic institutions, all while party colleagues and relatives have benefited from a range of business concessions, claims the government has rejected. Phil Robinson is the Deputy Director of Human Rights Watch's Asia Division. Quite clearly there's a, an, an effort by Hun Sen to intimidate everyone he can to enforce uh, a degree of silence uh, from both the people and from the opposition political parties to try to make it look like there's democracy when in fact, you know, it is as you mentioned, uh, the the second time that at a national election, uh, Hun Sen has basically faced no significant opposition. Speaking after Sunday's election, Cambodians in the capital Phnom Penh said they were happy at the result. This woman said that people were content that the ruling party would continue and expected the government to lead the country to a prosperous future. Hun Sen might be stepping down as prime minister, but he won't be disappearing into retirement. However, he said he would be staying on as the head of the ruling party and a member of the National Assembly. He also said recently he would step back into the prime minister's job if his son did not perform well. 
Soldiers in Niger claimed to have removed President Mohamed Bazoum from power hours after members of the Presidential Guard detained the politician at his official residence. In a statement, Colonel Major Amadou Abdurrahman said that the Defence and Security Forces have decided to put to an end to the regime they are familiar with. Niger's President Mohamed Bazoum has been removed from power. That's according to a group of soldiers who appeared on national TV late Wednesday. Bazoum had been detained for hours by his own guards in the presidential palace. An army spokesman, Colonel Amadou Abdurman, declared the West African nation's borders were closed, a nationwide curfew was in place, and all institutions were suspended. Security forces, according to Abdurman, decided to rebel due to the quote, deteriorating security situation and bad governance. <laughs> Supporters of the ousted president, Bazoum, have been quick to condemn the army's action, gathering outside the National Assembly in the capital, Niamey, to call for his release. La qui doit this man says he's here to defend democracy. He added Bazoum was elected for five years, and democracy should prevail. Niger is a key Western ally in a global fight against insurgencies in the Sahel region. The coup now complicates international efforts to fight a jihadist movement that has spread from Mali over the past decade. Bazoum's election was the first democratic transition of power in a state that has witnessed four military coups since independence from France in 1960. The coup has sparked international condemnation with the US calling for Bazoum's release, while the European Union, United Nations, France and others have condemned the uprising. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. I spoke with President Bazoum uh, earlier this morning and made clear that the United States resolutely supports him as the democratically elected president of Niger. We call for his immediate release. We condemn any effort to seize power by force. Uh, we're actively engaged with the uh, Niger government, uh, but also with partners in the region and around the world. We'll continue to do so until the situation is resolved appropriately and peacefully. This is the seventh coup in the West and Central Africa region since 2020. We're going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Now there is a battle of fire on two continents as deadly blazes are raging across parts of southern Europe and North Africa, including the Greek islands and Algeria. Wildfires engulfing parts of North Africa and southern Europe. <laughs> Greek authorities evacuated more than 20,000 people near the holiday island of Rhodes. Firefighters trying to conquer the flames, but they keep flaring up. And some say... They're starting to lose hope. Every day, every night, we are here and we don't make nothing. We burn almost everything. I believe we fight for nothing. In Portugal's Lisbon district, hundreds of firefighters battled an inferno that erupted near a popular tourist destination. Some locals were desperately yelling for government help as the firestorm threatens their community. In Algeria, that desperation turned into tragedy. Officials say at least 34 people died, including military members. Others have been lucky enough to survive, but all of their belongings, the hard work and physical memories of their lives have turned to piles of ashes. This man is a farmer. He says he and his family have no water, no food, and they're struggling to find a place to sleep. On the other side of the Mediterranean, Dramatic video shows the moments a car is engulfed in thick smoke, flanked by wildfires while driving on a road in Sicily. The regional president says those fires have killed at least three people so far. People who live here are anxiously watching the fires as they slowly approach their homes, hoping they will be among the lucky ones who are spared. As of Tuesday, officials say there are 55 active wildfires in this area alone. More help is on the way. The European Union plans to buy 12 new firefighting planes so they'll be better prepared to fight flames fueled by climate change. The situation that we see in Southern Europe uh, 
shows that uh, we are in the climate crisis. It's already here. It is uh, not unexpected. But for some, it is not soon enough. All the islands burn. We lost our island, our beautiful island. We don't have anything now. Really, we don't have anything. Tonight, we are learning for the first time about a link between allergies and lung health. A groundbreaking study has found young children with food allergies are four times more likely to develop asthma. He's lived with asthma for most of his life, so Zane Slater is no stranger to testing his lungs. Take a deep breath in as much as you can get in your lungs and blast out. And along with the respiratory condition, the 15-year-old is allergic to nuts, eggs and sesame. You get used to it. It's, it's kind of just become part of everyday life. But now Melbourne researchers have proven Zane's two complex realities are actually connected. And we're the first study to show a direct link between infant food allergy and reduced lung function later in childhood. More than 5,000 children are part of the groundbreaking work. At one, they were tested for common allergens like peanuts, eggs and sesame. At six, that process was repeated and lung function tests were added to the mix, with researchers finding those with food allergies were almost four times more likely to develop asthma than those who don't. And make sure that the appropriate treatment and management strategies are in place. Plans that Zane and his dad now have down pat more than a decade after first diagnosis. At the time we had no idea that there was a link. I think if we'd have known that first off it would have been a lot more useful. Rudy Giuliani, a lawyer who was involved in Donald Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 U.S. presidential vote, has admitted to making false statements when he accused two electoral workers in Georgia of committing election fraud. Rudy Giuliani, the one-time attorney for former U.S. President Donald Trump, admitted in a court filing that he made false and defamatory statements about two Georgia election workers. Now, if they ran such a clean election, why wouldn't they make all the machines available immediately? Giuliani led multiple legal efforts on behalf of Trump to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election, citing baseless allegations of voter fraud. What we're telling you is supported by evidence. Among them, he accused Wandria Moss and her mother, Ruby Freeman, of conspiring to produce and process batches of illegally cast ballots. The pair sued Giuliani for defamation in 2021. Giuliani told a federal court in Washington on Tuesday he did not dispute that his comments about Moss and Freeman, quote, carry meaning that is defamatory per se. President Trump, Rudy Giuliani and others claimed on the basis of this video that you and your mother were somehow involved in a plot to kick out observers, bring suitcases of false ballots for Biden into the arena and then run them through the machines multiple times. None of that was true, was it? None of it. Moss testified before a House committee investigating Trump's efforts to subvert the election about receiving threats and harassment due to the accusations leveled against her and her mother by Giuliani and others. It's affected my life in a, in a major way, in every way, all because of lies. For me doing my job, same thing I've been doing forever. Giuliani said in the court filing that he was making the concession, quote, solely for the purpose of this litigation, and, quote, without admitting to the truth of the allegations. The former New York City mayor, who was also once the top federal prosecutor in Manhattan, is facing other legal challenges over baseless claims he made about widespread fraud in the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Over the next 10 days, we get to see the machines that are crooked, the ballots that are fraudulent, and if we're wrong, we will be made fools of. A New York state court suspended Giuliani's law license in 2021, and a District of Columbia ethics hearing committee earlier this month recommended that his license there be revoked. He's also facing defamation lawsuits from voting companies, Dominion Voting Systems, and Smartmatic about fraud claims he made about the 2020 election. Samsung had said that the worst is over for the global memory chip market, but announced plans to extend production cuts because the demand recovery is largely constrained to high-end chips used in the artificial intelligence. 
Samsung expects global demand for memory chips to recover in the second half of 2023, but be constrained to the high-end chips used in artificial intelligence. The South Korean firm on Thursday announced more production cuts ahead as it shifts its focus to the AI market. Samsung's chip division has had to put up with an unprecedented semiconductor downturn brought about by a slowing global economy and high interest rates. It's led to a record $7 billion loss in its bread and butter chip business in the first six months of this year. For the quarter ending in June, Samsung recorded a 95% profit plunge, its second lowest quarterly profit in 14 years. The business is likely to remain in the red in the current quarter. But the company eased worries with losses shrinking slightly compared to the first quarter owing to higher than expected shipments of DRAM chips driven by AI demand. Analysts believe AI will help improve growth in the broader chip market, and Samsung is expected to mass-produce its own HBM3 chips, a high-end product that powers generative AI devices, later this year. Samsung also reported a 16% profit rise on Thursday for its mobile division. A day earlier, it unveiled its latest foldable Galaxy smartphones, challenging Apple's dominance in the premium market. Welcome back to World News Tonight, and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. An Iranian chess player who moved to Spain after she competed without a hijab and had an arrest warrant issued against her home has been granted Spanish citizenship. Video released by North Korean state media showed that the Russia's defense minister accompanied North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to a defense exhibition that featured the North's banned ballistic missiles as the neighbors pledged to boost ties. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell suddenly stopped speaking during a weekly Republican leader news conference, appearing to freeze and then went silent and was escorted away. Singer O'Connor, the Irish singer known for her stirring voice, 1990 chart chopping hit Nothing Compares to You and Outspoken Views has died at the age of 56. Two former Navy fighter pilots and a former intelligence officer testified on unidentified anonymous phenomena, also known as a UFOs, restating their experiences when they believed to have been seen them and calling on the US government to be more transparent about UAPs and warning that these unidentified objects are a national security threat. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. And we end with the Dior designer Maria Grazia Churi's fall show, where she reigned in the volumes often associated with haute couture fashion and sent out a lineup of slender dresses and capes in natural tones and touches of gold and silver. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good night.